Hey, it is Zenial Gamer, and today we're going to be talking about Guild War Offense. Uh, so we're not going to be looking at too many specific comps. Today we're actually going to be looking at how you identify which bases to attack, uh, and then how you develop a comp to attack them. So I'll probably, I mean, I'm obviously going to have to be using my own monsters in here, which will be some more premium monsters. But the idea is to think about what those monsters do, not what those monsters are and how those monsters are working to counter the enemy monsters so that you'll be able to pick monsters out of your own box that will work. Now, as you can see, we're only G2 right now. I think we were right on the edge of G3 when this particular Guild War started and a defense loss came in. So either way, uh, G2 Guild War, we should be able to find some def decent defenses to look at. Now, with that said, as you're looking for which base to attack, the first and single most important thing is that you always attack when you believe you can win. So if you don't think you can beat a plus three base, then move down to a lower base. If your guild allows it, do a 2-2-2. Two, two, two. If your guild does not allow it, then just do a 2-1-0 or even a 1-0-0. Zero, zero. It's better to get the wins with less points than to get no wins at all. Now, as you're looking through the different bases, one of the first things you wanna do is if you see a base that you think you can beat, you check the defense log and get an idea of how that team performs. So this defense looks like it's about 50-50 or slightly below it. So you can also notice uh, some of the teams. So this, this guild obviously was recently in G3, and so it is getting some defense wins against other G2, G3 guilds. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind as well, the quality of competition that they're facing. If you see somebody who's getting defense wins against Malicious and you're not a G3 player, you might not want to hit that defense. Now, how do you know if you can beat a team? Well, when you look at a team, first of all, we all have some kind of automatic counters. They're going to be in your decks, obviously, right? So most of us have a Copper Dozer team. So the first question you should always ask yourself is, can I Copper Dozer that? The second question is, can I Lucian it? Or maybe if you got a really fat Lucian, that's your first question. But basically, you're going to ask yourself, can I cleave that team? So looking at these two teams right here, knowing that we're in a G2, G3 range, I can assume that this Orion is going to be well over 300 speed. The Gianna is probably going to be up around 300 speed as well. Definitely cannot cleave that. On the bottom side, normally the Jeans are going to be around 240, the Chandra is going to be around 230, and the Perna is going to be around 210, 220. So if I look at the bottom team, yes, I absolutely can copper this. Now, I run a slow Emissetti. He's, uh, what, 243, and it doesn't matter because my whole team is in Will Runes. So even if the Jean outspeeds me, she's not going to do anything to me. Now, the other thing you need to think about is, based on the range of Guild War you're in, how many HP uh, you know, how tanky are those monsters likely to be? I would expect that Chandra could be up to 55k HP, but I know my copper can do 60, so I'm okay with the copper. I would expect the Jean could be up to 50k HP, but my Dozer can do 51. So again, I feel safe, but if I did not have all Will Runes, or if I did not have a strong enough Dozer, I would not think that I could copper this bottom team. So let's say I couldn't copper it, then how else would I counter it? Well, you would ask yourself, can I Lucian it? And the odds are, if you can't copper it, then you also can't Lucian it because 50k HP monsters, this is not a team that you would try and Lucian before even addressing the fact that there's a Perna. So once you've gone through all of your cleaves and you've identified either the cleave you're gonna use or the fact that you can't cleave it, then you need to think specifically, what is the enemy team trying to accomplish? What makes it dangerous? So again, we're going to focus in on the Jean, uh, Chandra Perna team right now because it's the much easier one. We'll talk about tougher teams later. Uh, but looking at this team, what makes this team dangerous is that the Chandra can put its hug on, on John and then John puts up invincibility. Then John provokes you. So now your entire team is attacking, is attacking an invincible unit while the Chandra is counterattacking you and you're not able to protect yourself from the Perna. How can you defend yourself from this? Well, there's a couple of ways. First of all, you could strip. Second, you could put up immunity. Now, the enemy team has a resistance lead, so strip is more dangerous. In that case, immunity is going to be the way to go. So if I were to do something like this, and it doesn't necessarily, honestly, these two monsters don't even matter. All that matters here is the Wusa. I know the enemy side is going to be somewhere in the 240 or lower range for the most part, uh, and my Wusa is in Will Runes anyway, so even if the Jean outspeeds my Wusa, it's fine, but the Wusa will definitely, almost definitely, cut the Perna and the Chandra. So I can put up immunity with Wusa, and then I can go with any other two units I want to counter. Now, knowing it's a resistance team, I either want to use units that have really high accuracy, 
or I want to use units that don't care about accuracy. So for example, I could bust out this Mina and then, um, and I'm going with the Mina because obviously what we want to do is kill that Perna. So we know that Wusu's immunity is three turns. Mine happens to be violent, but what happens if I don't get a violent proc and the Jean does proc and provokes me in between? I need to make sure that that Perna is gone by the time the Jean provokes me because then there's not enough damage over there to really cause me a problem. So the Mina will probably be able to one-shot my Mina. My personal Mina will probably be able to one-shot that uh, Perna. Now, if your Mina is not strong enough to one-shot the Perna, you could also run a Fran with a shorter immunity but an attack buff. Um, again, it's just about identifying what works in your monster box. Now, beyond Mina, I want to basically bring in um, another water unit because of the water unit is going to be attribute neutral on the Chandra and attribute advantage on the Perna. And if I bring in three water units, the Perna has attribute disadvantage, which means that it won't likely do much damage to me. I have a good chance for a glancing hit. So we can come in with something like a Barbara or a Stella or basically any damage dealer. I could also use this, um, this Teor. And then in this case, I could take the Teor leader skill, which will boost up my Mina's ability to survive a little bit just in case the Chandra starts hitting her. So again, it's all about the thought process of how do we counter. And within that thought process, you need to think about what makes the enemy team dangerous, how can I stop the enemy team from being dangerous? And then at the same time, you also want to consider AI manipulation through different elements. So in this case, um, it's not so much the AI manipulation of who I'm going to target. It's more the AI manipulation of making sure the Perna can't do much damage because Chandra and Jean are not big damage dealers. And at the same time, making sure that all of my monsters can do damage so I can drop that Perna very quickly. Okay, now let's look at um, let's look at our team right here, and we say, okay, I'm very confident about the bottom, but that top team is going to outspeed me, and I've got no way to defend against it. So then, this is not the base to attack. So in that case, we're going to keep on looking at other bases, and again, we pop up this base, and we say, can I cleave this? Well, the first team is a very easy cleave for me, uh, because I can run Odin, Bastet, and Kali. You double kill the uh, Tyrannus. The Odin will take the hits. He'd resurrect even if the Perna procs. And then the Odin one shots the um, uh, the Fen Yang. So that first team is very easy for me. The second team, again, I'm looking at uh, the, the fact that I'm probably going to be outsped. Now, the way I would deal with that second team is to probably try and outspeed it with my Bastet. And then use my Kali in order to one shot that Ciara. So if I did that, then I no longer have the, the best step for the first team, and I have to think, do I have other counters that can work? And now I'm just kind of rolling the dice that I can outspeed, and there is a good shot that I don't outspeed, especially because Iris has a higher base speed, a really high base speed. So if that's a swift Iris, then she will outspeed me. But if it's a swift Iris, she won't stun me. So then my best step still might cut. But the real question now becomes, if I use this team on the bottom, how can I deal with the top? So would this team be safe, for example? Now, as I look at this team, I figure that the Perna is going to atta attack the Katarina, but my, um, my Kebesunuf is 243, which I expect to outspeed the Perna, so I can put Invincibility on Katarina, and I believe that I could probably cleave the team the top this way. Um, now, what makes the bottom team dangerous, part of, part of what makes the bottom team dangerous is simply not knowing what the speed is. Uh, the rest of it is the fact that the Iris is going to strip and then the Sierra is going to get an attack boosted bomb, which will probably one shot something. So if I didn't want to use this or if I didn't have Bastet or if I didn't have a fast Kali, what else could I do? Well, there's a reason that people build many, many Rena's and Rena is a monster that is accessible to everybody if you can find her, which it seems like I cannot find her. Uh, she's somewhere in my box. Here we go. So now if we bring in this Rena and then we bring in double fire, then if that Iris strips my team and the uh, Ciara bombs my Rena, one of two things will happen. It's a max resistance Rena. So maybe the Rena just simply resists the bomb or maybe the Rena does take the bomb. Uh, she takes 30,000 damage, which would still leave her with about 20,000 HP after all the flags, and then hopefully we have the opportunity to heal her back before the Ciara stacks up more bombs. So from that point, I would want to bring in two fire monsters. I'd prefer that I have some sustain, and I'd prefer that I have some damage dealing. So I could do something like this, 
which is going to give me um, obviously speed to turn cycle. It's going to give me some uh, passive healing on Myrena in case she gets stunned from that bomb. It gives me the ability to stun either the Iris or the Ciara. Uh, basically, if the Iris is on despair, then I probably stun the Iris and, and target the Ciara with Perna. If the Iris is not on despair, then I probably just go all in on the Ciara. But, and again, this is not a completely free to play team. Um, it's about what's finding, it's about finding what works in your monster box. If you don't have Garrow and Perna, then you go through and you look for two other fire monsters that are gonna do the trick. Kamun and Zongfei. Uh, Zongfei is gonna give you defense break if your Kamun happens to be in a damage build, preferably violent. Uh, depending on your speed tuning, you can defense break the Ciara and kill with Kamun. Um, so again, it's all about just identifying what works in your box. Now let's say I wasn't comfortable with that one either. I move on to the next one. I look at this and I just say immediately, I can't do that. And then I look at this and I say, okay, I see a manipulation here. So on the left side, I see Lauren. Now that's the first thing that popped out to me was the Lauren, but I know that Lauren teams for me are usually pretty easy to beat because of Joel Tan. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna try to figure out if I can build a comp to, build, uh, to beat that Lauren. Now I know I can't cleave those, or at least I believe I can't cleave those. And beyond that, let's say I did bring in uh, Sierra Best at Kali is about the fastest, or Mimir Best at Kali is about the fastest comp I could do. Maybe I could one-shot the route, but I would still have to deal with the Lauren and the uh, Ciara, so it's still risky, even if I do outspeed. But with that said, I know Joltan dominates most Laurens. Now with the route comp, it's a little bit more dangerous because route can multi-hit, so I want to bring in some death pre prevention, so I would bring in a Tiana. Now at this point, I really don't have any way to kill that Ciara. So I've got to figure what's going to be the best way. And I, I just said Tiana, I meant Triana, obviously. Uh, so now I've got to figure out what's going to be the best way to kill both Ciara and Rauk. And so Theomars gives me attribute neutrality. So as we look at this team that I put together now, uh, the Triana is not free to play, but the, um, the Theomars and the Joltan are accessible to everybody. Um, and again, it's just about figuring out what works in your box. So now that we've got a team that deals with the top, how do we deal with the bottom? Well, the bottom, again, this is going to be what makes this team dangerous. What makes the team dangerous is that Jean will provoke you, Thaymars will defense break you and pound on you. If you try to cleave ahead, it's a resistance team and the Harmonia has unwanted harmony. So if you try to cleave and you don't do enough damage, it's going to heal itself back up completely and quickly. So how can you counter this? Once again, it's gonna counter completely by immunity because if the Theomars doesn't defense break you, he doesn't really do any significant damage at all. Most likely he's not gonna be super fast on this team because the Jean and the Harmonia are usually run as slower monsters. And so if the team is speed tuned correctly, the Theo is probably running no more than 220-ish. Uh, so his damage is likely to be lower and he's probably in some sort of a tankier build You might actually see him in like speed crit damage HP. He might have revenge runes on him uh, The idea of this team is not that it's going to Nuke you like the top team is basically cleaving you the bottom team is working to control you and sustain you So how do you block that control you block it with immunity? Um, if you don't have Wusa, you can use Amelia preferably not a level 1 Amelia, <laughs> but you know, if you don't have Amelia, um, you could do Fran or you could even do double immunities. So if the, you know, the Fran immunity is short, you use a Fran plus a Triana, and then you bring in some sort of wind nuker to deal with that Theomars like a Yen. Uh, the Triana is giving you death pre prevention and as soon as you get that Theomars down, you're good. So what'll happen with this team a lot is obviously Theo has Endure. So you drop the Theo down to zero health, then the Harmonia Unwanted Harmonies, and then the Theomars will target whatever the Harmonia Unwanted Harmonied and kill it because that monster is now below half health. Uh, so in this case, if you bring in Death Prevention with the Triana, you should be okay from that as long as you have immunity and the Theo can't defense break you. Uh, the triple hits from the Theo won't do that much damage. So you bring in a Wind Nuker to deal with the Theo. Once you've popped the Endor and it's healed, you just have to nuke it back down. Again, you bring in immunity to just protect yourself long enough to kill the Theo, and once the Theo is gone, there's no danger on the enemy side uh, because there's no damage on the enemy side. So what makes this team dangerous is the fact that Theomars can attack you while you're provoked, and he's going to be attacking a monster at half health because the Harmonia has already cut that monster's health in half through her healing. 
Okay, so now that we have talked about uh, strategizing, let's go ahead and do a couple of actual fights. Since we're up on this screen, we'll go ahead and just do this one. Uh, now I'll tell you, this team for me should be fairly easy to Copper Dozer. What I would do is leave the Theomars for last, even though it's kind of counterintuitive, um, but I'm not worried if I lose a monster here or there. So basically uh, what we're gonna do is boost our uh, Dozer first and kill the Harmonia, and then we're gonna uh, let the Theo do whatever he wants. We're gonna Copper out the Jean, and then we're gonna use the CC from these units. Uh, Copper has a stun, Dozer has a stun, and um, Imiseti has a slow and an attack bar decrease. So we're gonna use the CC and just try and control that um, that Theo. Okay, so everybody went right into the Joltan. The uh, Ciara actually missed the bomb, which is perfect for us. So we're gonna get right on the Ciara right here. And even though we could have killed the Ciara, I'd rather put up the immunity at this point, uh, just because the Joltan's gonna be able to finish her out. And so now we're good. Uh, it really didn't matter which one I killed, whether it was the Rauk or the Lauren, either way. Uh, I still have my death prevention up from the Triana. And so the, the resist from the uh, the resist from the Joltan was lucky because he's not in a resistance build, but it also didn't actually matter because even if Ciara had bombed him, the Triana would have just triggered and I would have been able to heal and cleanse. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and take out the Harmonia first. And now this is another huge part of Guild War. It's knowing which monsters you need to kill and in which order and through your team. So in this case, I'm taking out the Harmonia because I don't want to get unwanted harmony. As long as I stay at full health, I feel reasonably safe. Even though I don't have immunity, I feel reasonably safe at this point. So now the Theo propped and, uh, and unfortunately defense broke me as well, but we're gonna drop out the Jean and that clears those provokes. And with the uh, provokes gone, now if we can get a stun right here, we're good, even without the stun. So I'll lose the dozer, but the copper should still be enough. Um, we've already, there you go, we procced Endor right there, so I lose the dozer. Uh, the Theo procs again, but it doesn't matter, the Theo's gone, and so we got our first Guild War win. Uh, the way I think of it is like the enemy team is just basically... Um, like a, a house of cards and what I'm trying to do is flick out the card from the bottom so that everything collapses from that point. So in this case, uh, the Jean, the Jean provokes control you so that the Harmonia can unwanted harmony and the Theo can finish off that monster, but Jean can't provoke until my immunity is cleared. The Harmonia was actually the biggest danger to me. Well, the Theo, the Theo was the biggest danger. If you take out the Theo, then you don't lose a unit, but you can't kill the Theo because of Endor. So that made Harmonia the, the easiest monster to get rid of. I get rid of her and then there's no 50%, her, um, you know, no unwanted harmony to drop one of my monsters by 50%. My Dozer's able to take that extra proc and live a little bit longer. I copper out the Jean and clear the provokes and then it's three on one. Okay, so here again, we've got two teams that are gonna try and control you, but the bottom team is also gonna try, the bottom team is gonna try and control you a little bit with the Clara stuns, but it's also just bringing on an onslaught of damage. Uh, the weakness of the bottom team is that it doesn't have the ability to... So you'll see um, you see Clara Savannah together a lot, and that team is together because it can turn cycle. So Galleon Clara Savannah is kind of a common defense. And the way that team works is that the Clara strips everybody. The stuns are a bonus, but it's not even about the stuns. It's about the strip. Then the Savannah is going to do an AoE defense break and attack bar reduction. The Galleon does another AoE defense break in case the Savannah missed anything or didn't hit its qualifier. Uh, it attack buffs the Savannah and the Clara, and then the Savannah and Clara both are going to lap you and do big damage and knock out one of your monsters. So the weakness here is this um, This person obviously doesn't have a Savannah, but Barbara's not going to be able to turn cycle the same way. Uh, so what we're looking at is there's a couple of ways we could deal with this. The first way is simply just to bring in Arena plus Double Wind, uh, which means that the Barbara will attack the Arena and the Ciara will attack the Arena and then we're less worried about the Clara. The only way that that could go against us is if the Clara were to uh, defense break one of our wind units. So we would probably want to bring in something a little bit on the tankier side just in case. Now I could uh, bring in something like a Tyrannus and I get the Resurrect and Tyrannus is also going to hit that Barber really hard and be able to force a dismount. But if I do that, then I would also like to have some sort of defense break or healing or immunity. Um, ideally you would have all of them. 
But in this case, I'm actually thinking that I could go with like a Zing Shea, and then that's gonna give me the defense breaks, but it also gives me those passive stuns, which will be really useful. The Clara is gonna go first. She's probably gonna stun everything. If um, if I get really lucky, she'll crit the, crit the Rena, but that's, that's almost certainly not gonna happen. Uh, so instead, I would assume the Barbara is going to go next, and the Barbara will crit the Rena, which will put up the Rena shield. Ciara will try to um, bomb the Rena. Now again, it's a max resistance Rena. Now Barbara tends to be really squishy. I can drop her out very fast, and she'll no longer be a threat. In the meantime, Ciara will be occupied with Rena. Now the other way I would go with this team is to use a Josephine. Uh, the Josephine will cut when the um, Clara stuns me, and then the Josephine can try to provoke that Barbara. However, uh, the risk there is that I provoke the Barbara, but if the Josephine doesn't like happen to randomly proc, then the CR is going to bomb the Josephine, and I may wind up losing her at that point. Now, this top team is basically about strip control and then using the Orion to defense break and then the Perna to nuke stuff out. So for me, I would personally use my um, Amelia, Skull, Amelia Skull Gold Bulwark team here uh, simply because it works really well against this type of team. Now, if I didn't have... This particular comp, because it's two premium nat fives, basically you're just gonna go in with anything that shield will, preferably with the ability to recast immunity. Uh, so again, Wusa would be ideal, but if you don't have Wusa, Fran is fine. Uh, anything that's gonna give you multi-turn immunity and then water nukers. And so you go in with shield will and a couple of water nukers, you take out that Perna right away, and then there's not enough damage on the enemy side to do much more than just kind of annoy you. Like the Jean, uh, the Orion stuns are gonna drive you nuts and the Orion procs will drive you nuts. But as long as you've got healing and, and um, you can refresh that immunity whenever you get out of um, Provoke, then you're fine. So let's go ahead and see how these comps work. Wouldn't it be great if I lost a, a fight while I'm talking about how <laughs> to counter uh, teams in, uh, in Guild War? I wonder if I would have to leave that in. I think I would have to leave that in. Okay, so the Orion knows that we're recording and he decided to derp and help us out. And now that the immunity is up, it's pretty much GG already. Okay, so the Clara gets two stuns, did not crit, but the Barbara did crit, so exactly as we expected. Uh, now, hopefully the Rena's gonna take no damage, almost no damage here, okay. Uh, she did not get the defense break, so that's good. Let's go ahead and just heal ourselves up right now. Um, and then there's the first Zing Shi. He missed the stun, but he got his first, um, first hit. Now let's go ahead and defense break. And uh, I think at this point, I'm actually just gonna take the, uh, the dismount on the Barbara. So now Barbara can't even strip the Rena, and it's pretty much GG already. And you can see with that Beast Rider buff and the defense break still being there, wow. That Ciara is just going off. But yeah, with that defense break still being there, um, well, I guess she could just proc right out of it. So uh, maybe, the, maybe the nerf didn't mean anything if they're gonna proc that much. Dude, look, at, look at how much this Ciara has gone off. There's legitimately four dots on the arena right now. She's gone off that much. That's ridiculous. That particular defense is much more dangerous with Savannah. Uh, with the Barbara, Barbara is generally not a very good defense monster. She was more of an offense monster anyway. Uh, but with the Ciara Barbara combination, it could be very easily manipulated with the Rena. It did have two wins against Swagonomics, both on the second team. So that tells me that there's some trick to the second team that we're not expecting. It could be a swift Juno or just a super fast Juno. So one, one of the ways that I like to deal, there's two ways basically for me to deal with Juno. There's obviously more than two ways, but there's two ways that I deal with Juno. Uh, since they generally are built with no resistance, you could go with a defense break and a nuke out. So I like to use double beast riders. <laughs> <laughs> or in the past I did. I haven't really used the Beast Riders in a while, but um, my counter to Juno in the past was always double Beast Riders. Uh, the other way you could do it, though, is just really simple. It's um, uh, Lauren plus any kind of uh, water attack bar reducer. So uh, you could use, if you happen to have Teor, you can use Lauren Teor. Uh, another option you could use, um, you can use Mina. But if you're going to use the Mina, make sure your Mina goes before the Lauren, because once you put the negative effects on the Juno, the Mina is going to miss her crit rate. Uh, but really, again, anything that's going to reduce attack bar is fine. You could also do something like 
uh, Poseidon, especially with his new buff now, is um, really nice. Okay, so I was thinking of using Gemini, Poseidon, and Seage and just cleaving the bottom, but that is very risky because if Gemini misses um, a defense break, particularly on the Fenyang, uh, then that Fenyang could basically just solo my team. So I think we're we're going to stay with something a little bit safer. That's the other thing um, I want to throw out here right at the end is sometimes you get an idea and then you just get attached to it. And that's not the way you want to go. So here's, here's what I like to do. Uh, we're actually going to load in that Gemini team that I just thought of. So what I recommend is setting up the comp and then just visualizing. So right now I visualize the way this team would work if it were perfect. Gemini is going to be going first very easily. He's at 305 plus a speed lead. He's guaranteed to outspeed that particular team with no speed lead. So Gemini is going to go first. He's going to strip. Uh, we can assume that at least the Rika and the Fen Yang are in will rune, so we should strip both of them and then defense break everybody. Now the Poseidon is going to be 256 plus the speed lead, which is going to put him at 275. The odds are pretty good that he's going to outspeed that Juno. Despite those couple of wins, it's not like it's an undefeated team. It should be a standard despair Juno. She might be 250, 260 in despair. She's not going to be faster than 275. So Poseidon goes second. He's going to reduce the attack bars of everybody because of his recent buff and he can't glance. Then the Seage is going to go third, and the Seage is going to do big damage to everybody who are all defense broken, and just kill them all, and then that would be GG. But then you have to think, what could go wrong? Well, what happens if Gemini does not strip the, um, the Juno? Not a big deal, because I have no buffs, so the Juno's not going to be as big of a deal. What happens if the Gemini doesn't strip the Rika? Well, I'm going to take a lot of damage, and she's going to stun me, but there is a, a decent chance that I would still be able to kill her um, with my with my Poseidon because his skill one allows him to get rid of uh, debuffs and he does good damage with his skill one and Seage does good damage overall. What happens if the Gemini doesn't strip Fen Yang? It's GG, I've lost. If the Gemini doesn't strip Fen Yang, I can't reduce his attack bar. He's gonna basically one shot my Poseidon. These are all cleave monsters. They're not built to sustain any damage and the Fen Yang is just gonna solo me. One time in seven, that Fen Yang will resist me and then one time in seven I'll lose, and that's not the rate that I want. I wanna go in always assuming I'm gonna win. So for me, that makes it not a good team. Okay, so I thought about using double beast riders, but I really don't like the idea of bringing Barbara in against that Fen Yang, especially because I've um, changed their runes and they're slower now. So what I came up with is that I'd rather use triple fire and then I'm going to bring in, in this Velajul, I just got Velajul. This is my grand announcement, by the way. He was my most wanted monster. I got him about two weeks ago, just ruined him on FRR. Next monster I'm going to skill up, obviously, not skilled yet, so that is the one scary part. The idea here is that we're going to be able to take out that, um, that Rika, who is who we're going to target first, really quickly. And as long as we can do that, the Fenyang has attribute disadvantage and the Juno does not do much damage. Okay, so uh, we're going to go a slightly different route. We're still going to bring in three water monsters. We're going to use our Bastet, who will give us first turn. We're using this Chilling, who's going to be able to uh, strip off everything, um, the threat states and the invincibilities. We're using Anavel to give us some additional healing. So I'm going to get the shield from the Bastet and the healing from the Anavel. I've got attribute advantage all the way across. I don't have the glancing, so there is a risk that the Kumar could silence me. But the Annabelle is in violent, and the Chilling is in violent, and the Bastet is in max resist. So I've got every advantage against me against that silence. We're less worried about whatever the Ophelia can do, because actually those invincibilities are just going to help me with the Chilling. Uh, the Bastet's not going to do much damage, but the Annabelle should be able to do some, and she's also going to give me defense breaks. So the Annabelle defense breaks combined with the Chilling should do pretty good damage. And uh, at this point, I think we're actually just gonna take our speed buff. The, those are three, oh, even better, we got a proc. And almost knocked out the Obelio on the first shot. And part of that is, um, of course, because Chilling's got speed scaling damage. Now you saw we got lots of glancing there. So we do have the threat state here. And um, ooh, the Chilling was provoked by the Obe Obelio. So he was actually able to hit the Obelio instead of the threat state. Now, uh, the, the only downside here is we just stole the threat state. And so Chilling is not shielded right now. He is going to get hit hard. So we try and just sleep this Abelio. We didn't get to sleep. Make sure the chill. Oh, 900 damage. Okay. Um, so there you go. abelio has gone. And now it's pretty much GG already. So there we go, uh, guys. Oh, nope. We got one more. Uh, my bad. <laughs> 
So we got one last one now. The uh, the Rika is in Will Rune, so we're just going to reduce the attack bar. or re uh, We're not going to reduce the attack bar of the Juno. Uh, but the good news is the Juno actually cut because we didn't reduce. The Nemesis actually pushed it ahead and she used her skill too. So we were able to just bring up our immunity. And now the Rika and the Fen Yang, both of them are pretty much dead. Uh, when I say dead, I mean just taken out of the fight, not dead. But they're, they're dead as well. Uh, we'll go ahead and just kill off the Juno with our skill 1 right here. And now we can work on this Rika. And we got plenty of time. We still got two, um, two turns with everybody. Go ahead and... Um, it's actually the first time I've used my Bella Jewel too. I was kind of hoping for more damage than that. I gotta be honest, but... Um, dropped her pretty quick. Now, he did get the defense break, unfortunately, on the Masha. So we might lose our Masha here, and I missed the strip there as well. Uh, but the attribute advantage worked for me, so even though he got one defense break, uh, he didn't really do much damage to her, and we'll, uh, still didn't get the strip. Interesting. But this will finish off the Fen Yang. I'd be curious, now that first team I think would have worked either way, the second team I'm curious if it still would have worked as well if uh, if the enemy had better runes. Hard to, hard to know for sure. But, there you go guys. Uh, so that, those are, those are kind of like my high level thoughts on uh, Guild War Offense. Again, it's all about identifying that bottom card that you can knock out on the enemy house of cards that is their defense. Uh, so as always, I hope you found the video useful, I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time. Hey guys, if you're still with me to this point, then that means that you probably liked the video, found it entertaining, or even better, both. So please, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, and leave a comment down below, because those things help the channel grow, and more importantly, they show me that the video is useful, and that's the whole reason I do this in the first place.